Hey guys, so I'm Fairy Tales, and I've decided to start making videos. And just get a thumbs up just for that, you know? Oh no, I'm not gonna ask for thumbs up, I want you a thumbs up if you actually like the video. But you may know me better as Kieran, I've been in two Rune Shark podcasts, which is probably where you know me from. But when I was at the live stream event for the Sparta event, I've had a lot of requests to start making videos, and asks if just general, do I make videos? So I thought, why not give it a go, you know? Maybe something I enjoy. Something that can give you entertainment to watch and help you with guides. So today I'm just bringing you a relatively small video on the agility event, the pit, which you get when doing agility courses. It's at most agility courses, which you'll see a list in a table at the end, what courses you can and what XP you get for each game at each course. So the other thing to mention with the pit is that if you have an agility kit or a completion escape, you can talk to him and he'll let you do the games straight away. You don't choose, but you can talk to him to get an event straight away which you get very low XP for. So that's what I'm going to be doing to show you each a game, because obviously I don't want to do six hours of agility just to get each event. Which it does give you about one an hour, approximately. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less, so it is about an hour. It is worth doing every time. You've got quite a high chance of success. I, well, it's not too high, but my luck has been very good. And I mean, it's worth it. Because I mean, if you win, you get, depending what course, at this course, you'll get between 4 and 6k, and then you can gamble and get double XP. So it's really worth it. Right, so I'll show you the games now. Right, so as you can see, when I talk to the guy with my completion escape on, he goes, Oh, that's a nice escape fairy tale. It's very nice indeed. After all, he's a talent scout when he sees one of my capes. He's just like, holy shit, that's good. So then he wants you to appear on his show. Since he can't tell you where the show is, he knocks you out before you go there. Very nice of him, considering you're the talent. So then you get there. And you appear in a cavern. And there's these two characters. One's a werewolf, I think, and one's a goblin. Not too sure, but they take the piss out of you and generally just have some actually quite funny chat messages. So this one is Flora's Lava. This one is the lowest chance to win. I think you can't fail on these two wonky crates. But each time I think there's one fail, one crate that'll fall. So you've got to guess which one, basically. As you can see I got the right one there, but one of these is going to fail. And it'll crush underneath you. And if you touch the lava, obviously you lose. And actually, I might just do it right now. I've just done it. I've done it. The chances of winning that, and I do it first time on vid. Impressive, fairy tales. Impressive. Right, so then, if you win, you get into this back cavern. If you win doing it properly, you're going to have a crate here. And when you click on the crate, that'll let you gamble. And you'll have the ability to obviously say no to gambling or say yes. And if you gamble, you have a third chance of halving your XP, a third chance of staying the same, and a third chance of doubling. It is worth doubling. I'm going to make that clear. It is worth it because doubling, you make more XP than you lose if you lose. Like, if you half, you lose less XP than you would gain if you doubled. So hence, it's worth it. It's worth doing it. And you may, like, get half quite a few times at first, but it'll even out eventually and you'll be in profit. But also, the first time you win, if you talk to this guy, he gives you a gorilla mask. And the gorilla mask is the a little reward. It's just a vanity item. All it does is it's just a little gorilla mask. That's nothing else. And then you click on the store if you want to leave. If you don't want to gamble, you have to click, you have to do this. Right, so I'll bring you back when I get the next game. Right, so as you can see, I'm back in the cavern, and this time I've got the game called Create Expectations. This one is. It, last one is based on luck. I mean, there's no skill to it. There's no skill to this one either. It's just based on luck. You get to pick five of these crates, and one of them has a key in, so it's a 5 and 16 chance. It's not too bad odds, to be fair, for the XP you're going to get. I don't know why it says north in your game box. I think it's just a glitch, or it's just trying to mess you around. Because these people see the weirdest things and try to do mess you up. So all you got to do is just click on different crates 
and hope you get lucky. I don't think there's anything more to it. This is all I do, and event every so every so often you'll find the key. As you can see, I've oh, I found it on my last one. I've got good luck on vid, haven't I? Some pretty impressive. So then again, you get back in this cave, and I'll bring you back when I get the next game. Right, so I'm back in the cavern again. This time we've got Punch the Hungry Sheeps. So this game is actually, it's exactly the same as the create one. It, it's literally no different. It's based on luck completely. I think there's 16 sheets if you count them. I've never counted them. But again, one of them's got a key and you've got to punch them. Which is quite mean to be fair. It's only a sheep. But eventually, hopefully I'll get a key again because I've got insane luck going on right now two left. Go on, give us a key. As you say, you just... I've done it again! <laughs> three out of three! And I've got, like, the worst ones to win on, like, one go. Wow. Oh well, there you go. Another victory. You get to see the final room again. So I'll bring you back when I get the next game. And so here it goes again. Let's see what game I get now. And now I've got higher or lower. This is the first time you probably have the choice, really. More of a choice than if you win or not. Ever, I'm sure everyone knows how to play higher or lower, but I'll explain it. So you, oh, I've got a nice number there. It gives you a number between 1 and 9, and you've got to say whether the next one will be higher or lower. There's an even chance of it being any number from 1 to 9. I better click that because the time's going to run out. So you've got to choose if it's going to be higher or lower. Obviously a 1 is most likely going to be higher. And then I've got a 7. And obviously there's more numbers below a 7, so that's obviously the best one to choose. Obviously there's a 5, which has an even number each side. So it's, it's there you go, I've got one there. So it's a literally it's the same chance of going higher or lower if you win or not. So you, this is actually the best XP reward, as you'll see on the tables at the end. So if I click higher, which is what I'm going to go for, I'm probably going to lose here. Oh, I have not, I've won. Could I make this 4 out of 4? Anyway, so... Yeah, it's obviously you're going to go lower on an 8. Oh, what a scam! I win on a 5 and then I get screwed on the 8. So now you can say, as you lose, they just bring you down here and knock you out again to take you back out. Instead of going to the final room. Which, when you lose, you'll get a lot less XP. You'll still get XP similar to about one lap of the course you were on. You'll see the exact amounts on the tables at the end. But I'll bring you back when I get the next game. Right, so there's only two games left now, so I'll try and show you the other two and tell you pretty much what to do. Uh, I've got karaoke here, I think. Karaoke, I hate this game. This is the worst one, in my opinion. Right, so this one, basically they're singing really badly, so loads of rocks are falling. So what the game tells you to do is run around and hope you're lucky enough to avoid the rocks. So if, if I run around, you'll see your character saying stop shouting, and you see a rock falls down. I've got to avoid them, I'm going to get squashed. But, there's, I don't know if there's any skill to it, but I tend to find... Oh, holy crap. If I just stand in a certain spot and hope I get lucky... Oh, I'm going to get squashed, going to get squashed, going to get squashed. Just avoided that. I don't know if you can avoid it. But I think I just did. I'm not sure, but... Yeah, I just try to stand in a certain spot and hope that... No, I'm going to get squashed, going to get squashed. Oh, I got squashed. Rest in peace. Oh yeah, you see the idea, you just got to avoid the falling rocks. And then, if you last long enough, you'll win and you'll go to the final room again. So now we've got one last game to show you, which is... Put the thing in the other thing, which is the only one you can 100% win. But I'll give you a few tips on how to be better at it. Because you've got a really short time. So I'll bring you back when I get that. So just before I show you the last game, I'd just like to show you that... Well, I explained that, I know I said it's about every hour, just to show you what happens, we'll tell you. When you finish a lap, you'll obviously land down here, and a green arrow will appear above his head when he wants you. And you'll get a message in your chat box saying, Oi, fairy tales, come over here, or whatever your name is, obviously. And then you'll just go and talk to him, and the chat dialogue won't be exactly the same, but he'll take you into the game. Right, so I'm just going to show you the last game now. And this is the one that you can pretty much win every go, right? So you say, another thing I'd like to mention is that these will give you a long chat thing, they'll explain it, but 
if you just click forward, you'll skip the chat, you'll just jump in. Right, so it's this one you see, there's three shapes. You want to see these shapes as you jump, you want to see two of them. So I've got fire and lightning. So if you if you see two of them, and you remember two of them before all the objects fall, you've got a much quicker chance at finding one of them. This one, you've got a really short, you see, it's almost half already. So you've got to be really fast at seeing what sh at finding the shape you've got to pick up first. So if you see two, you've got a good chance. And then you've got to run to it and pick it up. As you can see, you just click pick up. You hold it above your head, and then you want to run to the, obviously, the corresponding piece. So you say, I just managed it there, and I went pretty fast. Obviously, I was explaining it to you, so I was a bit slower, but you can see you've got to be really fast. That's the one you can win every time. You, you want to be happy when you get that one, because you're going to win, and you're going to win XP, which is efficient. And it's going to increase your agility XP per hour. Another thing I'd like to mention, you've got, you can't have anything in your weapon and shield slot, which means you can't wear your horn, which means you can't get double XP from it. I know the skull boots are about, about now, but if you wear skull boots, you don't get double XP from this, which is probably good. You can see he's talking to this guy here, telling him to come over. don't know if he's going to. Is he going to? He's just standing there. What a slacker. What a slacker. Anyway, you get the idea. You can't have a shield or weapon on. So that means you can't get double XP while you do this. And then now I'm going to show you the table so you can see about how much XP you get from each course and each event and whether you win or fail. So I'll show you that now. Right, so as you can see I've got an XP table here which has got the XP that you, if you fail the game, this is the XP you get. So as you can see you've got the lowest courses at the top, highest at the bottom. Wilderness is out of place, for I don't know why. And then, so obviously you can see which one course you're going to be doing, and you can see which XP boundaries you're going to get. They seem to average about the XP of the lap, depending on how long each game relatively takes compared to the others. And if you need to look at the XP, if you'd like to pause the video now. And now I'm going to show you the, the XP that you get for winning. Right, so now you see the XP for winning, and you, now you see why the pit is worth doing. If you go to the top course, which is Barbarian, if you win higher or lower, you get near almost 6k XP. And this, right, is not including gambling. If you gamble, well, you can only gamble if you win, but then you gamble and you've got a chance of winning and losing, like I said before. And so obviously you can get pretty much 12k XP in like 3 minutes from doing higher or lower if you win. Right, obviously it's not guaranteed to win every time, but it is worth it. And it's, it, it's a nice little break, I find, when I'm doing agility. Every so often, like about every hour, when you get the, one of these games, it's just so nice to do something that is not repeatedly going around that lap. Just a nice little fun game to play, especially like higher or lower, I love playing that game. So then, as you can see, you've got the XP table here, and obviously if you're half, it's going to be half of this. If you gamble and win, it's going to be double this. So, obviously you've got the chance of staying the same as well. So this is the base XP. And if you need to look at the XP, you can pause it on this table. But I'd just like to thank you for watching. I haven't got anything more to say. I know this is my first video, so if I do sound unconfident and I'm not, it's not the best commentary, I do apologise, but please bear with me. I'll be doing a Barbarian Assault Guide, hopefully. Like, a series guide for each rule, explaining Barbarian Assault in general, as well as each rule. And showing you how to be a pro defender. Like, I figured out a method which seems to work pretty well, which I can show you quite easily on video. Not sure if it's the fastest, but it's perfect for explaining how to be a defender that doesn't fail, basically. You see all the, there's a lot of people in World 6 who don't know how to play Barbarian Assault. Well, obviously they play it all the time, but not a lot of them aren't that good. So I'm going to explain how to do each rule perfectly, and hopefully. But World 6 will start getting a lot of pro Barbarian Assaulters, if people watch my video, that is. So thanks for watching and please do thumbs up if you did enjoy it. I don't want to ask for thumbs up but I just want to get feedback, you know, I want to know if people like the video. Please leave a comment explaining what I could do better because I mean this is my first video, I haven't had practice at it. I mean I've been in the two podcasts but it's not like proper commentary. So if you do want to give me a tip or anything like that, how I can make it better, please do leave a comment. 
so thanks for watching guys and i'll see you in a few days.